the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I'd like to welcome you all to the September 20th, 2018 planning board meeting for the town of Phillipstown. Uh, we will have, be having a public hearing on the Peck Eiler application so if there's anyone here who wants to speak please sign in on the sheet on the back table um, and when we get to it will we get to that we'll have you speak um, Terry you want to take the roll Andy Moranzi Kim Connor here Dennis Gagnon David Hardy here Peter Lewis here Neil Toman here Neil Zuckerman here so the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the July 19, 2018 meeting. Does anyone have any corrections, additions? No? So would someone like to make a move to? Move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so the next item on our agenda is correspondence. We had a letter from Mr. Waxman regarding the Campbell approval of access on Upland Drive. And I'd like to ask you, Steve, um, what we should do about that. We have, it's an application that was approved. Um, and this is correspondence from neighbors saying that there, that there are issues with the approval. I'm just wondering what you think we should. Well, the general rule is once you've issued an approval, if someone disagrees with it, their remedy is to bring an Article 78 proceeding challenging your decision. Um, there's a narrow exception to that, um, and it's got to be prior to the permit holder obtaining vested rights by making improvements to the property or, or some such. And that's when um, new information is brought before the board such that might justify a motion to reopen um, the, uh, the, the permit that had been granted. Um, I got to tell you, the new evidence that is submitted on an application like that needs to be compelling. It needs to be proof, not just allegations, that there were misrepresentations made, material misrepresentations, um, in the issuance of the permit, or that there's been a change in the law, or, or, or some such thing that, that could have been brought to your attention or wasn't brought to your attention. Um, if the board is inclined to uh, entertain a motion, which is, I think, the first thing you have to decide to reopen, you should know that it has to be a unanimous vote in order to reopen a, um, uh, an application for a permit that you've, uh, that you've granted or that you've denied. So you have a letter before you. And um, listen, I don't, I don't know Mr. Waxman, but um, he doesn't purport to be an engineer. He doesn't purport to submit any engineering um, proof, no affidavits. Um, I do not believe that if you were to reopen the permit based on this letter that you would get that, that your decision would be upheld by a court. I, I think they'd find it to be arbitrary and capricious because there's no proof that there were any misrepresentations or that the road is anything other than safe and suitable for use by emergency vehicles. So I mean it's your decision but uh, my advice would be to not entertain a motion to reopen and to advise Mr. Waxman that you've read his letter. and. You know, he has his remedy in court if he's inclined to do that. Okay. Um, does anyone else have anything to say about that? No? Okay. So um, we direct Tara to. The letter was written, there's been no motion to reopen, and. Planning board considers the matter closed. Okay. Good. All right. So the next item on the agenda is a public hearing. And I'm going to ask Tara to read the public hearing notice. Do you have a microphone? Oh, on the list. Yeah. Thank you, Nielsen. 
The Phillipstown Planning Board for the Town of Phillipstown, New York will hold a public hearing on Thursday, September 20th, 2018, starting at 7.30 p.m. at the old VFW Hall, 34 Kemble Avenue in Cold Spring, New York, to consider the following application. Barbara Peck Eiler, 84 Old Albany Post Road slash Lake Celeste. The applicant is seeking approval of access for the construction of a two bedroom single family residence with a garage, driveway, well, and subsurface sanitary disposal treatment system on a parcel located along a private road not maintained by the town of Phillipstown. The property consists of approximately 19 acres and is situated in a rural conservation zoning district in the town of Phillipstown. Tax map number 72.18-1-5. Portions of the property also fall within the town overlay districts for scenic ridge lines and town designated steep slopes. At said hearings, persons will have the right to be heard. Copies of the application, plat map, and other related materials may be seen in the office of the planning board at the Phillipstown Town Hall. Dated at Phillipstown, New York, this 31st day of August 2018, Anthony Moranti, Chairman. Okay. Um, so, typically, I don't remember what we do typically yeah, to start yeah, these. Brief presentation and okay. then you usually, or well not always, open it up for comments from the board and then the public, although sometimes we do it the other way around. All right. So are you representing the applicant? Can you introduce yourself? And My name is James Clearwater. I'm a, I'm a land surveyor with MJS Engineering. I'm here with the applicant, Mrs. Eiler, and her contractor, Ben Fearing. As was said in the, oh, you want to turn it toward you? Unless you don't want us to see it. <laughs> As was uh, noted in the in the uh, public notice, this is a. Application is for a single family, two bedroom house on 19 acres. Mrs. Eiler purchased the property in 2016 from the uh, Hamada family who owned it uh, since 1980, September of 1980. The property has deeded access rights of way through Lake Celeste Drive that has been in insured by the title company it was also the subject of a letter from Mr. Gabba in February of 2018. Um, I don't want to steal your thunder, or, but the letter basically supported exactly what the title company said, that the uh, uh, applicant, the owner, has access, needed access through the Lake Celeste Drive and also has the right to make improvements to that road to exercise that right. The two bedroom house will be served by an on site septic system and well. Septic system we applied to the Button County uh, Health Department, and that design uh, was approved um, uh, in July. We are in receipt of a, a review letter from the Continental Fire Department, which I think you folks actually obviously always already have. Um, they had seven areas of concern. Items five, six, and seven are located on site and their recommendations will be incorporated into the plan. Actually, they're already have been incorporated into plan. Items one through four are a little bit more problematic because they are located on uh, Lake Slash Drive. Uh, Mrs. Eiler has made uh, uh, an offer to the uh, Homeowners Association for, uh, to make improvements and also has offered them $1,000 a year toward uh, maintenance and upkeep uh, going forward. Um, so we're here tonight for, the, uh, for access and uh, site plan approval. If you have any questions, we'll try to answer them. Um, so typically we would have Ron speak at this point, is that right? Well, yeah, I, I think I, um, I do a bad Ron impression, but I'll, I'll try okay. my best as far as that goes. Um, the application is for site plan approval because it's a house more than 40,000 square feet. Is that right? No, no. It's very small. It's only two bedroom house. All right. What, what's, what's the site plan approval for? 2,200 square feet and a 1,000 square foot garage. 
Um, you need site plan approval, I know that. Do you know why you need site plan approval? I guess not. <laughs> they need site plan approval. And it's also for an open development area road. So those are the two things that you're, you're here for tonight. Um, the site plan is pretty straightforward. It's the property that the house is going to be built on. The road is another matter. And I think it would be helpful if you would describe for the board what improvements it is you propose to be making to the road in order for it to be safe and suitable for emergency vehicles to access the property. If the fire, you want to speak to that? Yeah, you, you, yeah go ahead. Yeah. So, um, I mean, there's basically two, th there are maintenance issues on the road, which really are just issues of sustained maintenance. Um, in other words, the road has not been well maintained over time. Clearly there's erosion, uh, there are low spots, and those do affect and have been noted both in two letters that are presented uh, to the board, one from the fire department and one more recent letter. I'm not sure what the source of that letter is, and Mr. Wan wrote a letter also. Um, there are two critical points. Uh, I could bring up the photos on my computer if people want to see, but uh, I did that at the last hearing. There's a very wide stone wall. It's almost six feet wide. Um, there's a trimmed stone wall, but then there's a rough kind of rubble wall, and that rubble wall narrows the road to less than nine feet. Um, This is Lake Celestis, and this is Albany Post Road here on the left. Lake Celestis, and the sites here. People are familiar. The road narrows. There's high brush on one side of it. There's a there's a very low rock wall. And in discussion with Ron, there's really two possible approaches toward remediation of that condition. One is to narrow the existing stone wall, which is within the right of way. Um, to a more appropriate width of you know two or three feet, um, which would be sufficient and stable, and not affect the property line of the tenant behind the fence there. Um, the other would be to simply raise the grade, and in other words, basically widen to the other side. Um, I mean, in in our conversations as regarding that, the last time it seems that at a certain point these are conversations with the building department and engineering specifically. I mean, our intent is to participate and comply in whatever way is, is most efficiently remediative of the problems and prevent, presents the least impact to the community in general. Um, the specific engineering of that uh, would partly have to happen, I think, in collaboration with the residents of Lake Celeste, but our attempts to communicate with them as regards what would be best for them have uh, gone unanswered thus far. But uh, originally, I proposed to narrow the wall. That was what I proposed in my letter, uh, last letter. Um, there's another place, uh, which is earlier. There's a sharp bend. I think it's right here, right? That, that, that sharp bend? Yes. Right. So there, this is really, it's almost nothing. It, it, it would present a problem for a truck coming through just because it forces the road to a sharp turn. And it's just, a, it's just an outcropping, a rock outcropping. It doesn't appear to be affecting anybody's lot. Uh, uh, by my view, I could probably take it down with a laborer and a pickaxe and bring it back and straighten that road. I mean, it really doesn't need even any machinery to do the job. I mean, probably we do it with some light machinery. But um, just to straighten, to true, to true that line so we bring it in the truck, we don't have to try to sway around there. Uh, but it's, it's, why it hasn't been done already is a question in my mind. It's not, a, it's not even, it's hardly a job. It's really a maintenance job. Um, then the other things that were, that were discussed in the fire letter have to do with removing some of the tree growth and making this turnaround viable. That was one of the bigger things which we also addressed in our prior correspondence to the board. We have copies of all this stuff if we need, but it's, I believe you, Articulate it on the record for the public hearing. Just tell people what you're going to do and turn around. Yeah, to tr to cut back some of the trees and lower the line again, so you could bring a truck around the circle. The tree growth is such that it would obstruct the movement of the vehicle through the circle. Um, and and I believe that also because it's within the it's really it could be accomplished within the turnaround. It doesn't affect the properties surrounding. It would all be within the turnaround itself, just to make the turnaround as it exists. Uh -huh more passable by removing the tree growth within it. 
after you get past the turnaround, you're all on private right of way. Uh, so, I mean, then it really is just the engineering plan is a, is a high knob. Can that be heard? No. So I move them. Move the mic. Got it. Um, maybe that's better. Is that better? Okay. Um, no, so we, we can't see very well. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> pardon? Yeah. No. I know. No. Leave a mic because I can't point and hold the mic and hold the notebook. Um, is that better? Okay. So. At this, this turn, we remove tree growth, and then you're on a private right of way just through the properties of Hall and Braverman, and there's some remediation to that. It needs to be repaved and widened, and there's a one very high, very high ledge knob that would have to get hammered back. Um, but I don't think that that really affects the general uh, condition of the roadway or anybody. Nobody's really affected by that, by that work at all. Um, and that would be, we would do that work. Uh, we don't need to, it doesn't, it doesn't really require collaboration because it just leads, other than with the Bravermans, it doesn't really require or affect any other tenants. Um, does that answer the questions? I just want you to make a presentation. I don't have yeah. any questions on it. Is it disturbance at 10,000 square feet? That's the reason for site plan? I'm pretty sure that's that that's that's a the total disturbance is to, with yeah that sounds right yeah, that's right. All right yeah the main reason we were sent to planning originally had to do with the questions regarding the right of way itself whether we had access and I think that that's been relatively definitively I mean that was the originally when we made a presentation to the building department we were sent to the planning board because there was ambiguity as regards Barbara's right of access to her property. And I believe that that was quite settled. So subsequently, these other questions came up and we have to satisf satisfy fire. Uh, and you know, it's very possible to satisfy, you know, to satisfy fire. I mean, the general point I would make since I'm here and I'm standing up is that it would seem to benefit the entire community to have the 14 houses on Lake Celeste Drive be safely accessible by emergency vehicles. Um, there's no good reason that they shouldn't be, and it's quite possible to make them so without, without negatively affecting the, any of the existing properties there, without approaching anybody's lots or anything like that. It's, it's a very doable thing and not even particularly difficult or expensive. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna ask if anyone on the board has any questions. At this time, we can always ask questions after the public hearing. Um, Neil? There is, there is one section when we walk the site, there was a section, maybe go around the other side here, right here, where you had a, a very, very steep grade going up in here. It, it, on the property? A, on the property, definitely more than 14%. Have there been any? No, we designed the road so it meets it. So you're not using the existing road. Well, it has to be graded somewhat so until it meets the 14. So There's a logging road that runs up there. Yeah, you, you yeah. There's one residence, there's an existing exactly. residence until after you get up in towards the property. Right. Okay. There's, an there's an existing residence, and just beyond that, I remember that there's very there's steep a very steep grade. grade. You come past the Bravermans, and there's a steep grade. And we have to sway the road a little bit to make that grade, but it's it's soft ground and it's a doable. Yeah. Okay. All right. As long as it's been addressed. Yeah. There's a profile on here if you, if you really want to see it. The fourth sheet. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Anybody else have any questions? No. So, Steve, I just want to ask you a question. Um, 
or I guess I want to ask you this question, really. Um, so you're talking about making changes to the road, um, you know, t um, cutting back a stone wall, paving, et cetera. So is that on property which is owned by someone else? And how, what are your rights in terms of access there? We have right of way. What does that mean, though? Can you explain to me what that right means? of way, which, to, which as we understand it, encompasses that entire road and leads to Barbara's property, and she's as entitled to the use of that right of way as every other resident would be. You said 50 foot. I just and couldn't width. hear you very well. But width. it's not necessary, but it, it's possible to conduct w the work. I mean, so there's two questions as to what property line those are on, because they're, it's a right of way through a variety of properties. Right but is an existing roadway, and it's possible to meet the request of the fire department without encroaching on what are the sort of, you know, um, I don't know, almost cultural limitations of people's lots in the sense that it's possible to, it's possible to do the work without taking down anybody's fences or, or cutting down their hedges, right? Which is a separate question from what their property lines are. It's possible to conduct the work without being in anybody's yard or tearing at anybody's fence or ripping up anybody's lawn. It's possible to do all of that work within the existing roadway simply by improving the conditions of the existing roadway. And where the work becomes complex and difficult is beyond Lake Celeste Drive and we have more room to work. We're on either the, the homeowner's property or on the remainder of the right-of-way, which simply crosses a single lot, but this undeveloped land, and it's just, it's basically wild, and it's possible to complete the work in those areas also without negatively affecting anybody's residence, yard, fences, et cetera, anything of that sort, if that answers the question. That answers my question in part. Um, one of the things that we are charged with on the board is to try and preserve stone walls, for example. Right. Um, so, so I had a conversation with Mr. Gaba about the particular stone wall. I mean, I don't believe that it's a historic wall. It does not, in my personal view, I do a lot of restoration and things like that, but I mean, I couldn't, without scientific analysis, just determine how long or when exactly it was constructed. But it would appear that that wall was constructed subsequent to the development of Lake Celeste community, which happened in the mid-century period. It's not. It's not a 17th century stone wall. Um, it, it, it's also possible, in my view, to preserve the appearance of the wall aesthetically. It's very wide. It's six feet wide, um, which just isn't necessary, right? It is also possible to leave it alone entirely and sway to the other side and raise the grade and move the rocks that are on the other side and create an easier passage on the other side. Um, and I talked to Mr. Gaynor about all of this. I, I didn't produce a proposal on it because it seems that the most practical thing to do would be to have a cooperative relationship with the residents whose properties abut that and work out a safe passage through that, which might affect both sides, but that would be best done. I mean. If it was just me, I would just, you know, take out 18, 20 inches of rock there, and and you'd still have a stone wall that's four feet wide instead of six feet wide, and you could get a truck through. That would be my personal opinion. But it's possible to approach the same problem in multiple ways um, if we had a collaborative relationship with the residents. Okay. Neil? Which we would like to have. I'm, I'm sorry, that, that did not seem like the answer to the question you're posing, which is an interesting one, which is, I'll reframe it as a hypothetical for you, Steve, which is, if a member of a homeowners association desired to do something with a communally owned or group-owned group asset, in this case the road, if one desired to do that and others were either disinterested or actively opposed to it, what rights does that one party have to do such a thing? The law is actually pretty clear on that. Um, if you have an easement and everybody along the road shares the easement, then you have a right to make reasonable improvements to the roadway. However, there comes a point where what you want to do may be considered unreasonable because you're damaging other people's property along the road. That's not a problem for this board, though. That's a problem for the applicant. If the applicant comes to this board and we reach an agreement as to what's going to be done to the road, whether it's taking off a small piece of the, the stone wall or it's widening on the other side or whatever it may be, 
um, the burden is then on the applicant to go and do those things. This board's approval doesn't confer upon them the right to do that. That they either have under their easement or if a court would consider it unreasonable, they don't. And if it turns out that they don't, the court says, no, you can't do that, they've got to come back and say, gee, we wanted to take down the two feet of the wall, and it turns out we can't do that. So now we, what we want to do is modify our uh, ODA approval to allow us to you know, push it out on the other side of the road or make what other, uh, whatever other improvements they need to do to make it safe and suitable for emergency ingress and egress. So therefore, our site plan approval will be contingent upon them having access and agreement among their colleagues, neighbors, et cetera, to make those changes. Well, I don't know if they necessarily need to go and, you know, get approved. It would be nice if they did, certainly. But if it's their position that they have a right to, for example, the grading. I think people would be hard-pressed to say that the grading is unreasonable. You know, you have a roadway. It's very steep. We are at our own expense going to improve it. I don't think, you know, it would be up to a court to say at the end of the day. But I think you'd be hard-pressed to say, gee, that improvement they're making to the roadway that they hold an easement over is unreasonable. Okay. But other things, you know, might be up in the air. Now, do they, it would be a good idea to go and get an agreement with the neighbors, but do they have to? No, they have an easement. So what's going to happen is they're going to come in and we're going to have a finalized plan for that road that satisfies your engineering consultant and, of course, yourselves, that the road is safe and suitable for ingress and egress, and then it's going to be up to them to build it. And if they don't build it, their approval, you know, the, the, they haven't satisfied the conditions of it. They, they have to come back or, you know, they can't get a building permit for the lot. But how does that relate to, sometimes we require a driveway agreement, for example, from If it was applicants. a subdivision, then you'd be in a position to do that. Oh, because, because, because this is pre-existing. Okay. So that's good to know. All right. Any, the, only thing I'd say, the only thing I'd say is I, I am actually kind of eager to hear what the public has to say. We've received many, many letters on this topic, and therefore when that happens, that tells me that there's a real need to listen to the other side. So I would love to, at least for me, at least that's what I'm interested to hear. So any other comments from anyone else? All right, so at this point, then, we will open the hearing to public comment. Um, I have a li list here, so I'm going to call you by name. If you can step up to the mic, state your name and your address, and um, try and keep your comments. You know, there, there are, yeah, three minutes, because there are about, you know, 30 people on this list, so it'll be long. So the first person is Tom Forbes. Good evening. Um, I was president of Lake Association, Lake Celeste Association when the acreage Miss uh, Peck Eiler purchased was put up for sale and I've been coordinating the response of our community at the Lake Assess, uh, Celeste Association uh, to her prospective purchase uh, since that time. Um, I'd like to note that the notice for this public uh, hearing indicates that Ms. Peck Eiler's property is at 84 Old Albany Post Road slash Lake Celeste. Ms. Peck Eiler is not, in fact, a member of the Lake Celeste Association. Membership in our community requires a positive vote from three quarters of our shareholders. To my knowledge, and I've polled them several times, none of the 24 households in the Lake Celeste Association would support the membership of Ms. Peck Eiler or anyone else attempting to build on property that requires our road for access. <coughs> We have since such a request to build on uh, since we have since such a request to build on a part of our property in 1968 was turned down and several were turned down under Mr. Hamada from whom she purchased the property. Always assumed that the town would enforce its statute, which requires that a road be 14 feet in length, among other things. And as you'll hear from a surveyor later. Uh, and, uh, and in uh, direct, um, shall I say, um, opposition to what you just heard, most of this road does not conform to that uh, requirement. So we've always af assumed that the town would enforce its statute as it did then and has up to now. And we've had several community members who could have purchased this property for a song years ago, as you'll hear, but didn't because they knew it couldn't be built upon. Before Ms. Peck Eiler signed the contract for this 
parcel, which was at a bargain ba basement price, presumably because of the restrictions on building, I informed her through her builder that our community opposed any building on the site. Another member of the community, uh, community told her this face to face. Her ba builder basically told me then, as he has subsequently, that we've got the money, we've got the time, and we'll prevail. And we trust that's not the case. Now, I've got um, three letters. Uh, we, we have um, 24 households. About 75% of our household are weekend or, and or seasonal residents. Uh, we've got a number of people here tonight who are going to speak, but I've got letters from three others. Shall I read them now, or shall I? Uh, Just place them in the record, I think, would be appropriate. They'll well, be you know, uh, they raise some very interesting points that haven't been risen before. One is about the biology of the road. Uh, one is from a woman who's been a member of the community for 70 years since it was formed, and the other for a taxpayer who's been around since uh, 1961. Um, and I'd like to make those points at this public hearing at some point, if not now, then later. I just don't think they should be read into the record. We have too many people. If he wants yeah. to make the points, yeah. that's fine. Right. All right. Um, okay. But you can submit them to us, so and they'll go into the record. All right. I will. Kara, there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, typically, we don't have a back and forth with. Okay. So, number two, Al Braverman. I purchased. Uh, the last new home to be built at Lake Celeste, which was built in 1965, uh, in 1973. I purchased it from its previous owner. Um, and um, I have been there since. So I was a direct witness to some of these events. But I do want to make one very small point, And that is the statement about the historicity of the stone war wars is absolutely false. They are historic. How do I know? Because I explored all the woods through the 20 acres when I was young and with my children and so on. And many of the walls are built under the shade of uh, black and red oaks, which are climax trees. All this area was farmed until the Erie Canal was put through in the 1820s. Then it was allowed to go back to nature. And the walls were built before that. They're extremely ancient. That's a verifiable statement. Now, as to the um, uh, experience of the community, when I came and purchased the property, there was a, some land behind it which had been cleared. There was no foliage on it. This was part of the 20 acres, and the, the two, uh, a friend, a couple who were friends with the riches were supposed to build their house on it. And they were planning to do so uh, when they were forbidden to by the township on the grounds that the, the uh, access, road access through the Lake Celeste community was completely uh, inaccessible. For example, many of the houses on the Lake Celeste Road come right down. Their little gardens in front of the house itself comes right down to the road. There's no space at all. So this was um, uh, 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 not permitted uh, then. Uh, subsequently, uh, Mr. Hamada purchased the 20 acres uh, from Mr. Rothman. He made multiple efforts to develop it. He was determined to do so and uh, resolved to do so, but was not permitted to for the same reason nor was I, because this land was, first of all, was not uh, to be uh, uh, built on because no more houses could be built because of the, the access. That was absolute. And so the, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't done and, and couldn't be done. Um, and um, when Mr. Ha Amara attempted to get permission he too was una unable to obtain it, as was I. So all this land uh, 
And by the way, the county would not permit it to be kept forever while someone bequeathed it to a group that wanted to keep it forever wild in the 1970s, and um, uh, they wanted to stop paying taxes on it, and of course the county insisted that they continue to do so. So the fate of this land has been fixed from the 1960s through the very recent past, and there has been during this period absolutely no major improvements to the roads, uh, and uh, as was, uh, and uh, there have been, and all the houses are still there. There are no, no more, no less. So that there's nothing has changed. The community is still as overcrowded, uh, still as congested, and uh, the, the roads are unimproved, and the, the, the road, the Lex Less Road itself is unimprovable from a practical standpoint. It a whole, it's, barely, it's barely the size of one car. I mean, you scrape your fenders going just on the road. And uh, so it, it, it's to improve it all the way down in the half mile that it takes you to the old Albany Post Road is virtually impossible. So my, I have one simple question. Um, if the regulation of the township uh, has been to forbid any further building on any land that could only be reached through the Lake Celeste Road. If that, if that has been true since the 60s to practically the present day, what has changed now to justify allowing building to go on, building that will bring construction trucks, building that will bring other large vehicles, and ultimately a house with more people to be injured because if you go up and down the road, you have to back up to get out of the way of the other guy. There's no, so what, what has been uh, changed to make the original ordinance forbidding uh, uh, for the house building to change? If there is something that is concrete and realistic, then it would be interesting to know it. If there is not, then one would certainly be curious, and we as members of the organization, all of us, would be curious as to why all of a sudden this rule which was held, kept the riches from building, their friends from building, uh, me if I had any disposition to build, and uh, Hamadas from building, why all of a sudden with no improvements in the road has it changed? All the improvements being essentially chimerical. You know, there are things that you can imagine doing which are really almost impossible if you've ever seen the road. That's all you need to do is look at it. Okay. So that, that's, I have a, obviously a long-term picture, but I, I just wanted to make my point of view. I myself blacktop my own road in 78. Anyway. And, Thank uh, you very much. Yeah. Okay, so the next person is Sharon Stein. Sharon Stein, no? Um, Number four, I, I can't read this. Can you read it? Oh, absolutely. Not. Um, so, Lucille Tortora is number five. Number four, I, I'm afraid I, I it, it says perhaps Mac something der. <laughs> 375. Is there an address? Someone live at 375? No. Um, I guess we'll have to come back to that one. Lucille Tortora. Is Lucille here? She was here. Um, so number seven is Andrew Stein. Uh, Beatrice Biederman. She was here for the other set. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, Upland Drive. I see. Okay. Uh, William Florence. I'm William Florence, and um, I'm a lawyer in town. Um, I live out on Route 9D across from the, the uh, Greek home. It's my house with a tall roof. Um, 
I've been retained by the association to um, represent some of their views and to hone closely to the requirements in the sections of the code for the town. And the two parts of that that I'd emphasize for you right now, one is that the road uh, that is approved should be one which is convenient and one which is safe. And you've had um, a firemanic opinion f from Continental Village uh, in that letter, just to repeat something I think you probably already know, and that is the fireman, the driver has to have someone out of the truck and to, to guide him from the front of the truck and someone at the rear of the truck to guide the steering as it would affect the tires and the truck at the rear because of the uh, configuration of the road and the narrowness of certain parts of the road. Um, there's an, a, the narrowest part on the road is in the second section, which is beyond the ownership of the association. Let me back up just a little bit. And the one where you've heard so much now is about the rock walls. And I would posit to you that um, taking a rock wall and making it in half or taking the face of the wall off is, is a simple thing and that the rest of the wall will be the same. And that's not how rock walls are built. And so I just want you to understand that simply asking someone to take two or three feet off the face of a wall means you have to basically remake the wall because of the facing of the, of the, and, the lo and the location of the various odd angles and shapes of the stones. Um, I'd like to come back though uh, to this, the point that we also had an expert go out and tell us if that road uh, beyond the turnaround that was talked about could be safely and conveniently operated under any circumstance. And it's his opinion and he's left a, we've not only had the, uh, uh, Mr. Rowan's configure, uh, survey, I don't know if, it, I think I should call it a map. His map of the, the roadway will show you the various locations where there's a variety of dis widths of the road. Some places are, um, in narrow spaces, uh, in length narrow, I'm saying, uh, the width might be 19 feet. Mostly it's 11 feet, 12 feet, 10 feet, 9 feet, and it, one space it's 7.5 feet, and another couple of spaces where the rock walls that I'm talking about are 8.5 um, feet or slightly more than 8 feet. So, um, and I'm understanding that Mr. Um, Rowan would be able to detail um, not only that, but also give you um, his recollection and what his, his drawing is. We've already supplied um, the, his drawing, his, his map, to the board through uh, your secretary, uh, Tara, here, um, some time back. And if you don't have it, we'd be happy to supply it so that you can have a, a more detailed look a calc one where there's calculations actually made so that you have some idea besides words that would allow you to make an objective assessment of just what we're talking about here. Another piece of this that um, there, the, the reason you have stepped on this unusual uh, unanimity of opinion against this is one thing. It's, it's the character of that little community. It's an association, it's incorporated, and the idea here isn't to have the biggest, the fattest, the widest, the, and the straightest, and the levelest road. The whole idea is not to have that. It's, it's the anti of all of that. Why? Because it's the character of the community. It's what identifies and brings these people together. It's their value systems that have a unanimity in that, in that particular way. Uh, l lastly, I want to suggest to you that uh, I think under 112 there's a section 
in the back, I don't know whether it's 64 or 60, I can't tell you right now, because <clears throat> I feel like I only have a short moment, is to, to say that there has to be, you have, as a board, required there be a written agreement of maintenance. That was five minutes. Okay, yeah. I just, uh, if, if, if we run out of people, I might want to say something at the end, but I don't. Uh, just let the yeah, carry on. No, it's it's carry on. Okay. <laughs> Thank well, you, Mr. Gabbard. I, I just was. I like the people. You do. Okay. <laughs> uh, the, the last piece that I, I I'll be very brief, and that is, what is this land? Forget about the road just for the moment. We can't forget about the road, but. The land itself is in a conservation area. Why? It's because a ridge line, it's a ridge, it contains a ridge and a ridge line that runs from Montoya through this property to a preserved area now owned by the county of Putnam from a conservation company. That went out of business apparently. And then the next one is Teddy Staff Cox is the next hundred acres up. So you have several hundred I shouldn't say that. I should say more than two or three hundred acres that are constitute this ridge. And what's going to happen here, instead of the public being able to have and enjoy it, one person will get it, get that enjoyment, because they will be up there and that will break what amounts to the view shed. It, you know, this thing's sticking up. And so <coughs> I have. Um, talked with people who are interested in that, and they have expressed an interest in if seeing if they can't find a higher and better use for the community than a single family dwelling there, and to deal fairly with uh, the owner of the property in terms of making a, making a transaction occur. Uh, that has begun, that process has begun, and so, it's not only are, you ask, are we asking you not to approve uh, a road that's not convenient or safe, that's the words of the statute, um, also to consider that we have a possibility here, the likelihood of our being able to do something special in the community, in that part of the community. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, the next person is Michael Braverman. And we're going to try and keep it. I'll be brief uh, because much of what I would say would be redundant to what my father, Dr. Braverman, already said. Uh, but I'll restate that the fact that he had the opportunity to purchase the land in question in 1973 for a song, as someone said earlier, and was not given the opportunity to develop that land, that land would have just been a tax liability for him then because the law prohibited building on it. Now it seems the law is changing, and the only thing that's different is there's more money involved. To me, that raises the specter of impropriety, the specter of, you know, a uh, different standard being set depending on the amount of money being spent. And, uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So next is Marjorie Calter. Thank you. I'm a resident of Lake Celeste, as is my husband. We've been paying Phillipstown taxes since my in-laws uh, built their property at Lake Celeste in, I believe it was 1957 or 1959. I wasn't there then, but um, since then we've been enjoying the house and it's enjoyed by our daughter and son-in-law as well and hopefully by our grandchildren. I'm actually here tonight to read a statement by neighbors of ours at Lake Celeste who are in their 80s and who could not be here tonight. And they asked me to speak to the board on the subject of their ownership of their house. They say, we are in our 80s and our children and 13 grandchildren are at Lake Celeste frequently to visit us and to stay in the house and to use it for future generations. Our septic system is 15 feet from the road. If the road were to be widened, 
we would need to move the septic system at substantial cost. Our income is from a pension and social security. Moving a septic system would be a great burden. We have been taxpayers in Phillips Towns since 1961. We look forward to enjoying the house and to having our children and grandchildren enjoy it for the rest of their lives. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the next person is Robbie Wasserman. Robbie Wasserman. Uh, okay, number 13, Daniel Lutzker. Much of what I was going to say has already been said, so I'll save you some time. But I would like to give you a little more historical perspective. Um, Dr. Braverman has been in the community a long time, and he described it very well. Uh, I've been there even longer. Um, I've been a member of the Lake Celeste community since 1970, and I've been associated with Lake Celeste even before then. Um, having been first dating the daughter of the uh, founder of Lake Celeste and then later getting married to her. Um, so I've been there a very long time and, and uh, one point I wanted to emphasize is that numerous attempts have been made by various people to build on the particular property we've been discussing. Um, I want to go back in, in history a little bit. The founder of Lake Celeste is a man named Samuel Goldberg. And he sold that parcel of land that we're discussing tonight uh, to Murray Rothman, who was a member of the community. He wanted to build on that land and was told to his surprise and to Sam Goldberg's surprise too that no further building would be allowed in the area. And so since he couldn't build on the land, he donated it uh, to a uh, conservation group uh, that was mentioned earlier. So the, the point of what I'm trying to say is that um, the opportunity for the, the present owner uh, to own this land never would have arisen if the planning board had ruled differently in the past. So numerous people um, have tried to utilize this land and couldn't. Um, we've always been told that the planning board, that the uh, um, officials of, of the uh, township here uh, would not allow it. Um, I, I would like to ask a question, if I may. Um, I'm a little confused about the deeded access to this land in view of the fact that I've always been told for many years uh, that no one would ever be able to build on this land. So I don't understand how that right of way was deeded to anybody. Um, I don't know, I, how would, I don't think that's a que question we can answer. Well, well it's a I legal think we've question. we've with the applicant I before. I don't know if the applicant wants to address that or not, but I mean, it's. I think, do you want to take comments now? Or let no. everybody get through it? No. Maybe, we, maybe at the end. The end. That's okay. fine. Good. So we will um, see if the applicant can address that question. Thank you. Um, so the next person is Paul Rowan. Paul Rowan. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, Paul Rowan, surveyor. Just so happens I live at the north end of the lake. Um, they, I was asked by my colleagues here to uh, make a map, a uh, survey map. And uh, I would just point out... Paul, yeah. Let's, let's attach it so that you don't have to have your okay. hand glued to that. Do, do you want to use my board? Is that what you want to do? Yes. <laughs> I do. I, I, got, I asked for permission. Not to me, then, but that's well, okay. Glenn gave me permission. Glenn's board's over there. You're that's okay. Uh, Thanks, Glenn. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. Well, if you want us to take it down, we'll take it down. The meetings don't get so okay. <laughs> We're going to have to do something to create this comedy between these parties, and maybe throwing the board will be a good place. Yes? Okay. 
Yeah, um, so it's, the map's broken up into two sections. The lower part is the lower end of the right away, and the upper part's the upper. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It, I, I don't think anyone's really going to see anyway. Yeah, sure. Don't mind Yeah, I mean, I would just, you know, in regards to this situation. Use, that's, use the microphone. You're going to yeah. need to hold In regards microphone. to this, you know, discussion, I would just point out, you know, the fact that there's a, you know, a bridge there that's, uh, you know, 11.2 feet wide in one part, 12 foot at the other end. Um, you know, you got eight and a half foot over here. Just under nine over here between uh, between walls. Um, as you, as you go up the right of way, um, you know the current road actually goes outside of the right of way by three foot over there. And over here we got almost 13 and a half feet. It's outside of the right of way. And if you were to actually put that back into the right of way, you know there's ledge there, and you'd be moving power lines. You know it, it's going to be issues. Um, there are stone. What's that? Does it does have to turn around? Um, yeah, you know, naturally, I, I give some of the dimensions of that current asphalt drive, which, yeah, it's 7.3 I got there. But anyway, uh, we got a stone, you know, some of these stone sheds, I, I would, you know, please note the proximity of some of these stone sheds to the road. Some of them are, yeah, well over the property lines, and they're, these are ancient sheds. Um, very nice little structures. You know, just... Uh, I would encourage the board to take a look at my map if they could. That's all. Thank you. Um, do we need to have a full size version of that in the record or not? We do. I know we have the smaller version. I, I, we, we, we submitted a full size yeah, we do. I, I, I looked at it that. today. I got the small version, the, the, the 8 by 12. Oh, I don't need it. I just want to make sure it's in the record. Oh, okay. I, well, I have a copy of, okay. of it. Thank you. Um, so the next person on the list is Ann Regan. Thanks for listening to all of us tonight. I'm a member of Lakes Less Association. And I am been a member, my husband James and I, for 31 years. Um, we are full-time residents at Lake Celeste. And when we came to Lake Celeste, there were three of us that were year-round. Um, and after 31 years, there were just six of us. Um, so the lake is certainly a, um, a community of a uh, less traveled road. Um, I've raised my daughters there. I'm now raising my grandchildren there. And the ticket to going on the road is to be a listener because car travel really doesn't happen on the road. Um, our biggest culprit right now is the UPS truck that is coming up the road w with way too many packages, but we're dealing with that. Um, I have, whether it's the fortunate or unfortunate, um, chance to be the co-chair of the road committee at the moment. We share a lot of committees at Lake Celeste, and we do a really darn good job at maintaining our road so it's passable. We maintain it twice a year. We maintain it in the spring and in the fall. We grade it. We have installed culverts. We have installed drainage. We have installed um, pits to collect the, the runoff. Um, we keep it passable and we keep it safe. We've over the years also worked on our bridge, which is a big concern for us. Um, I know many of you have visited Lake Celeste Road, um, Lake Celeste Drive. Um, I recognize a few of your faces from uh, one of the site visits. Um, just to go back to the 31 years ago, um, there wasn't a Lake Celeste Drive then. We were all 357 Old Albany Post Road and we all shared a mailbox because the road wasn't a road. And whether it was Phillipstown or Putnam County, when they put in the 911 um, ordinances that we all needed to have better uh, response time, we were all given an address. Um, no one was asked. I certainly would never call our road a drive, but we all have addresses of the drive. And there are not just 14 houses, but there are 19 houses that use Lake Celeste Drive for access. Um, every day, every month of the year. Um, we plow it, 
and I said, as I said, we maintain it. Um, the most disturbing piece of information I heard tonight um, is from the applicant how easy it would be to just move some dirt uh, some rock walls, um, refix some grading, take some trees out. And we have continued to be very vigilant over the years to maintain this road. Um, that six foot piece that's been mentioned um, is six foot at the moment because it needed some work a year or two ago. It needed to be stabilized. And we absorbed that cost and stabilized the, the rock wall to, to keep it safe. Um, it's not just the fire department that comes up and needs to be redirected up and down. It's just about any large truck, whether it's an appliance delivery or a furniture delivery or uh, even the UPS. Um, uh, I, for one, use Pedala oil because they have a small truck that can come up and down the road. So we, we really have... Um, are very vigilant, we're very community-minded, we take care of our lake, we take care of our road. Um, the disturbance is not minimal when I think about what is to come if the expectation is that we're going to have large trucks up and down the road to build a piece of property, to bring concrete in. Um, I would leave you with the thought, um, if you haven't visited yet, to please come up and visit walk our dirt road and go over our lovely, lovely bridge. Um, Lake Celeste is a very, very um, special place. Um, it's kind of a paradise uh, and we'd like to maintain it that way. And uh, as I said, as a community, we all contribute to it. We all contribute our money and our time to, to keep it that way. So we ask for you to visit and, uh, and think about the future of uh, our community and our road. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jim Regan. That was both of you. That was both of you. Okay. Uh, okay. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Smythe or Smith? That was one of the letters. Okay. Um, the next two are also letters. So. Weisberg and Hurt? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, So the next person on this list is Ben Fearing, but you're, me, yeah, yeah, you just thought you had to sign in, right? And the next person is Barbara. I that was also okay. Doug Cunningham, you're just signing in because you're just here. <laughs> cool. So it's not 30 people. That's awesome. Allison Howold. I'm next. I'm yeah. What's your name? Daniel Okay. So if you can come up to the microphone. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Howald. I live at 66 Lake Celeste Drive. Um, we have not lived there for 30, 40, or 70 years. We're, we're kind of some of the newbies. Um, having been a, a property owner at, at a member of the Lake Celeste Association since 2016. And one of the things that attracted us to this community was precisely what Mr. Florence was outlining, which is it's got a certain character. It's got a beat up little road that's, uh, you know, you, you got to back up and get cars in and out. It's got stuff about it that, that attracted us to the community in the first place. And one of the reasons that we, we left uh, where we were living, where there was development built up around us, and we were told and assured by our realtor and everyone else that the size of the community was fixed and the land around it, you know, couldn't be developed. And that was attractive to us. So to know that that wasn't true or it has been true in the past and maybe in question again is a little bit disappointing. Um, I'll also add on a practical note that uh, we share a well with one of our neighbors uh, who happens to live across Lake Celeste Drive from us and we are near the so-called turnaround. So somewhere underneath Lake Celeste Drive and that turnaround is our primary water supply. So the idea of having that somehow disrupted during all of this is, is a little bit uh, upsetting as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Noel Kropp. Um, I just uh, want to, um, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, what kind of a plan would allow the developer to um, increase the width of Lakes Less Drive, either uniformly or whatever the board would, would require. Will it be 14 feet? If so, that seems like it would be much more than a trivial disturbance for many of the people live, 
that abut the road. I abut the road. I'm not, you know, it's not clear that the road would need to be widened in front of my house, but I know it's less than 14 feet. So I'm interested to know, you know, what level of improvement would be required. Uh, and I d definitely strongly disagree with the, uh, the way that it, w it was presented earlier as being, you know, basically just chop a few feet off of one stone wall and cut down some trees. I mean, it's far from that, in my opinion. It's going to be a big disruption to, if, if, if we're required, well, if the, if the developer were to widen it to 14 feet, it would be a huge disruption to quite a few properties. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul Bonner. Hi, uh, my name is Paul Bonner. I live at uh, 13 Lakes Ellis Drive. I've been there, I'm a newbie, I've been there for 11 years, so it doesn't really, doesn't count for much. Um, I'm the president of the board this, this year. Um, one thing I'd like to ask is, um, there seems to have been no discussion or no specific mention of something that we that I sent to the board in a letter <coughs> to you you guys on November 17th, which was a copy of the Perelson application for a building permit and the and the denial of that building permit by the town. I don't know who it was, the uh, Hustus, I think, the building inspector because there was more than eight houses on the road. So this hasn't been mentioned at all, is that maybe we're not talking about it because this is a hearing about access, but it seems to me that a lot of what we've been talking about here in terms of, you know, I, know, I think there was a letter from one of the attorneys advising the board saying the neighbors have written and but no one's given any proof. You know, well, I'd like to request a letter back from you explaining why you ignored that proof, which is your own documentation. Now, maybe it's not proof, and maybe it doesn't count, and maybe it should be dealt with in court. And of course, we're happy to go to court. We're, we're getting ready to go to court. That's not, a, not an issue. Um, I just think that um, we're, we're in a kind of a situation where the, there's not much land left, not much land left to get hold of in, in garrison. and, and the only land you can get hold of is land that's pretty much been deemed unbuildable. And I <coughs> have been in the construction business for 35 years. I'm an engineer. And I have my, my antenna go up when I hear a builder or a contractor or a developer telling me, yeah, it's no problem. We'll take care of it. Oh, it's just a stone wall. It's just this, uh, we won't, won't damage anything. We won't hurt anyone. We won't impinge upon anyone. It'll be for their own good can't understand why they haven't responded. Why won't they cooperate? It's all for their good. When I hear that and that <coughs> uh, kind of approach, I immediately wonder what, what's not being said. What's not being told to me? Why, why is this all such a great idea for me that nobody thought of in the last 45 years or 40 years? So anyway, I'd like to thank you, the, the Temple Board, for your time on this. And um, that's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Robert Berlin. Thank you. I'm Bob Berlin. I live at 41 Lake Celeste Drive, and the house there has been part of our family since 1949. Um, I also would like to reiterate, I'm just wondering what has changed that would now allow this land, which was never buildable because of refusal by fire department, by the planning board and so on, what would now make it uh, a building lot? It never was one. It was given to be kept forever free. And I guess because of non-payment of taxes, uh, it was foreclosed upon and then sold but has never been allowed to be developed. And I'm wondering again, why now, all of a sudden, <coughs> uh, this would be acceptable? Uh, Mr. Fearing called me to ask about it, and I said to him, look, as far as I know, this has been turned down multiple times. 
Uh, he didn't seem to think that that was going to be a problem. Uh, but he was aware of the fact that there was a long history of refusal by the planning board and the town, uh, fire department, to build on this property. But uh, obviously, I guess they felt that they somehow could go ahead and succeed despite all the refusals based on the road, based on the fact that this was supposed to be a conservation area, and so on. I'm just wondering what's changed. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and then the last uh, person is Betsy Haddad. Hi. Uh, so I, um, I own 15 Lake Celeste. That's my primary residence. I just recently um, decided to live there full time uh, starting in January. And uh, the house next door, 19 Lake Celeste Drive, recently came on the market. And I have three adult children. And I was kind of delighted, actually, because I would have a place for them to stay when they come visit, uh, one of whom's married. And you know, I thought, oh, maybe I'll have grandchildren there that um, joining the Regans and others. And, um, a really beautiful, idyllic spot. The house hasn't been renovated in many years, and I thought, okay, I'll renovate it for my for my kids and my family. Um, it's there's a spot. I just had it surveyed. I'm hoping to do renovation. I am concerned uh, because it is pretty close to the road. Um, that if some of the property was taken away, that it would really affect the value of my house, <coughs> and I'm concerned about actually the renovation. I'd like to go ahead with it, um, but I am concerned. I recently had it surveyed, and I uh, checked. There's one spot of my that my house of uh, the one spot is uh, around 17 to 18 feet away from the road. I know that the road isn't 14 feet wide there. Uh, my septic tank, which I, I recently had uncovered and um, pumped, is 13 and a half feet from the road. So I'm concerned if there were a loud, I don't know what you have to do to widen the road, but would it, just the vibration alone, affect my house? It's an old house with a rock, uh, foundation, would it have an effect, effect on my septic tank? I don't know. I don't know where the field is. I don't think it goes down to the road because it's very narrow there, but I don't actually know. So um, those are my concerns. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So there's nobody else who would like to speak? May I do a postcard? Um, so it will be one minute. Okay. I'm going to hold you to it. The, the history that makes this unusual is that these people who bought their parcels bought by lot number. And then the deed also said, and all of the, uh, all of the property from the lot line to the travel way, so that they were under the impression, of course, that they owned up to the edge of the travel way. Now, what had happened earlier than that is that a map was filed that was showed two lines 50 feet apart from one another going through a part of this community. And that was map, I think, 387. Another map for a little farther along, and oh, by the way, Mr. Goldberg, whom you've heard of before, as the founder of this, deeded over certain land and the travel way, so that the travel way was the ownership of the association, not of individual parties the, at that point. But there are three separate end-on-end -end rights of way, the last of which is for people who uh, are at the closest to where this particular project is proposed. I just needed you to know something about that. That started in 47 and has 
um, continued. Thank you. So at this point, there's no one else who wants to speak, correct? Um, so we have an option to close the public hearing. Um, would you like to? Yeah, there's a lot of paper. Yeah, I would like to step it over. I don't know about it. All right. So, I mean, just kind of reach. Yep. Uh, we're, there, we don't care when we do back and forth and back and forth. That's right. So this, that's is right. Your, this is your chance, and then we're done. And then we're not, we're not going to have people get up again. Yeah, so. I'm just going to yeah. answer yeah. a couple yeah. things. Just, we just want to make that clear for the public the that we don't. Right. held notes and whatever. And it was yeah. I mean, right. just to be really clear, nobody is proposing to build a highway uh, over Lake Celeste Drive, right? There are specific points that were presented by the fire department as being an obstacle to the movement of emergency vehicles and our proposal is that we correct those problems in the most expedient way possible. There's no heavy machinery involved, it's not necessary. Um, it's, uh, there's no proposal to affect things in the way that was described in the that's one. Two, there is simply a wrong understanding about the history of the lot. Nothing has changed. The lot has been in private hands. It was never deeded wild. There's no documentation been presented by any party to substantiate it that. The only, there's one document that was presented, which was re referenced the Carlson application. That document is not even for this lot. It seems to me that to some extent people are thinking about a different piece of land in some cases. Um, simply this has been in private hands. Does it, we, sh we presented uh, the history, history of the deed, chain of custody going back to the 1950s. Hamada owned it since 1970. Uh, there just, no one has presented these rejected proposals, just no documentation. To, we did a FOIL request before we purchased it. Uh, that we were told these things but we were never shown any documentation to substantiate the idea that this was ever deeded wild. It never was. It's always been a private lot, historically. It's always been a potential building lot. Historically, people chose not to do it. We had direct contact with the Hamada family. That they, they did not like the opposition from the community. That's true. They also moved up to Woodstock and built their house up there and let go of it and held the land. And the father passed away and she lives up in Woodstock, and that's where they are at this point. Um, so there's all of that. Um, then um, the, the, uh, the other thing is that I was called a developer. I guess to some extent there's some veracity to that. But this is Barbara. Would you stand up for a minute? Barbara would live in the house. Barbara is a single woman. Uh, it, it's a 2,000 square foot house, smaller than some of the other houses there. Uh, there's no proposal to build a McDonald's, to build a shopping mall, to build a... This is a, this is a residence, the last residence that could be built. It would be the last lot on the property. There would be one more member of the Lake Celeste community if you chose to accept her, uh, or not, if you chose not to, and you'd simply have somebody participating in your roadway maintenance agreement. There's no grand scheme, there's no ulterior motive, it's to build a house. Uh, I build single family residences. I do exclusive residential work. I've never done any commercial work in the 35 years I've been in business. Um, and then uh, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. If I might add one thing. Mm -hmm. we, the, someone had mentioned the uh, condition of the bridge. Uh, we were worried about the bridge ourselves early on. Um, Ron uh, Gaynor had asked about the bridge. We prepared a little report for him on our assessment of the bridge and gave it to Ron. So that's, a moment, that's part of the record. <clears throat> I, I might also add, somebody mentioned that the property at one point was, for, was foreclosed on. That's not the case either. We have a full chain of title all the way going back. That's not the case. I guess that's... Okay, thank you. So at this point... We can make a motion to close the public hearing. If, I'm sorry? Can I make a comment? I just met with Murray Gluckman, who was the person... Hold on one second. Okay. So typically we don't do this. Um, and we made clear. And we made that clear before Mr. Fearing stood up. We gave people an opportunity to, to speak. Um, so at this point, would we like to close the public hearing? Does somebody want to make a motion to that effect? Or is there a reason we might want to hold it open? Do we want more comment? 
Anybody have any thoughts on that? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so the public hearing is now closed. May I ask a question of Steve related to the matter now that the public hearing is closed? Yes. Kim, thank you. Yeah, sorry. So, so I, I, I'm sure we can all look at our notes at another date and talk about what topics were raised that were interesting. I do wonder a question for you, Steve. If there is an existing condition on a series of 24 homes in a road that is impassable by emergency vehicles and is relatively unsafe as described by many of those who live on the road, what is the validation of whether that road continues to be used by people currently given that it's unsafe? Well, if it's, it's an existing condition and it's a private road, there's really nothing for the town to do about it. It's a private road. The only issue is whether you grant ODA approval, which is approval to use a private road, in this case, with more than eight houses on it, or four actually, eight. well, eight, it's older road. So uh, that, that's the only issue here as far as that goes. Let me, let me go hypothetically one further, which is let's imagine there was a... But I've heard that the road is safe. I, well, I, I heard, heard many people describe it tonight as being unsafe, that you have to have a UPS truck be guided up to drive by, that well, you can only hire certain energy companies vehicles. to come because it's... I don't think they're talking about, I, don't, I didn't think they meant, meant personal vehicles. I thought they were talking about UPS trucks and oil trucks. I heard a lot of things that sound cars. unsafe. I heard there was only one car that could pass in places. And oh, okay. I, like so I ask is, let's say it was four feet wide, the road. And it was just un impenetrable by any vehicle. Would there's any recourse for the town to say, you know what, this is probably not a safe place to live kind of topic? If it's a private road and the approvals have already been issued and the houses have already been built, the people have vested rights, there's nothing the town can do about it. And so just to go back to the, the eight house, because there was the discussion of the eight houses, can you just tell us again for the millionth time what the whole deal is with eight houses on a road? The, um, the town, not in the zoning code, but um, in the, uh, the, the building section, um, makes provisions for open development areas. And the way open development areas work is that um, if you have a private road, and it depends on the age, and I always get this mixed up. It's, it's I'm going to say dating back. No, I don't think so. I think it's older than that. I think it goes back to the 60s. was when this well, we could keep guessing. We may get bingo eventually. But how, 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 how about you just, we'll take it as an approximation, okay? Older roads, you can have up to eight houses on private roads, and building permits will be issued. But any more than eight, and you have to come for ODA approval. Newer roads, and the newer roads are still pretty, pretty old, might be the 80s or the 70s, like Bill's talking about. Um, you can have four houses. And, in, and, with a, and get building permits for them. But any more than that, you have to come for open development area approval. Now, the way that it works is, uh, first you have to go to the building inspector, and the building inspector will take a look at, at your road. And if you um, have, again, depending on the age of the road, either more than four or more than eight houses on it, he'll make a preliminary determination, or perhaps look at the facts and decide he can't make a determination at all as to whether or not the road provides safe and suitable access for emergency vehicles and other vehicles of, of smaller size uh, accessing the roadway. If he either determines that it, it, uh, it does not or that um, he can't tell, then it gets referred to the planning board, which is what happens in the prior ODA application, this one as well. And you take a look at the road and you determine what needs to be done uh, to bring it up to standards to be safe and suitable those uh, for access by emergency vehicles. So standards are not necessarily the um, uh, uh, road standards for a, a private road in the um, town of Phillips Town to get a building permit as of right. It may be something very small. It, it may actually require build, may build, bring the road up to those standards depending on, on the road. Um, I know there were a couple ODA applications that came in where people had such steep grades that they simply couldn't be, the road couldn't be brought up to standards to issue a building permit along it. I know we denied a couple before. So, um, you know, it's going to be an engineering matter and a matter of whether, you know, and as I mentioned, a lot of it's going to be they make a representation that they can, uh, they can make these improvements. The burden's going to be on them to secure the right to do that. But I mean, uh, they'll talk to Ron, and, and Ron will talk to their engineer, and we'll determine what needs to be done. And uh, 
That's, so, that's what's going to go into an approval, unless it's simply so bad that you can't issue an approval. So once you go to ODA, you can have as many houses as the road will permit. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. As long as it provides safe and suitable access and they, they meet the bulk requirements of the code, you can put more and more houses on it, absolutely. But as so you do that incrementally, you're going to have to improve the road and improve the road until eventually right. you're pretty close to town road uh, specs. So in other words, it's, it's the, the whole standard before was an as-of-right standard. To Back before eight houses, they had four up. houses, right? And so right. they come before us, and we can. Right. It could be more than because people are often confused, and they think that their limit was eight forever, and that that was it. Once there were eight houses on the well, road, well, it is eight forever unless you get ODA approval. Right. <laughs> right. But otherwise, you got to bring the road up to town right. road specs. And um, one more thing, um, there is a. a a right of, uh, you can't have a landlocked parcel, is that correct? Well, you can have a landlocked you can. parcel. These people just don't happen to. They have a deed they with have a deed specific, that has specific right easement in it. Yeah, okay. So, any further question? No, Neil, do you have anything? Peter, David? This uh, just seems to me like a legal matter. I, you know, um, so we'll see, maybe, if it goes that way. Engineering matter than a legal matter, but okay. Okay, so, so uh, all right. Okay. So, um, I don't know what the next step would be, because I'd kind of like to hear from Ron. Oh, you got to hear Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the before. Next, the next step I would suggest would be to get the transcript of tonight's public hearing and the additional documents. You got another, well, I guess we had the survey before. I don't know if Ron's taking a look at it or not. If we had it for a while, I'm sure he has. But um, get everything over to him, and he's going to have to issue another tech memo uh, regarding his observations and you know what he thinks needs to be done. I'm sure he'll talk to the applicants, and then we'll have a report at the next meeting and go from there. So we will be talking about this at our next meeting for everybody who came here for the public hearing. Do we need to make a motion for Ron to prepare that? I, I don't think you're in a position to add, tell Ron to prepare resolutions one way or the other yet. I think you really need to hear from him. No, that's what he does anyway. That's a standard thing for him. So I guess we do. We, we don't need to tell to tell Tara to make sure that he's got all the documents. We don't have to move him. Yeah. I'm sure Tara will do. That. I think Tara will definitely do that. Three letters yeah. that he gave me tomorrow also. Okay, excellent. Um, so that's it for that for tonight. We're going to move on to some old business now. Um, do we want to take a short break? You guys want to keep going? No. Let's keep going? Okay. Um, so I would just want to tell everybody that on your way out, if you could be quiet, because we're going to try and continue this meeting, and also that this room works like a megaphone. So if you're talking at the far end of the hallway, we can hear everything you say. So just so you know. <laughs> it's true. Um, so the next thing on the agenda is Garrison Property Holdings, LLC, 88-92 Whipperwill Pond Road. Thank you. We're going... Whipperwell Pond Road. We're gonna, I think Glenn has things to say, so we're, yeah. He seems to be setting up, so I assume he's got stuff to tell us. Is that right, Jennifer? Am I right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. This is, Glenn, you're setting up for Whipperwill Pond, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Can your employee please hurry up? He's supposed to be going very slowly. Just tell, you, tell him to move it. Can't hire a good staff in the case, Um, just in case anybody's following the agenda, um, James Copeland asked to be removed from the agenda for this month, which is why we're going straight to Garrison Property Holdings.
Um, so I just want to um, I want to take a moment to talk about submissions to the board because um, we've been talking about um, we, we're starting to get a lot of things by email really late and stuff like that. Is there any way that you can submit these um, in the two-week deadline so that we can? Well, they are actually submitted. They are uh, in in the two-week deadline. These are. The only reason I make this is so you don't have to strain. Oh, okay. That's all I do. Okay. Okay. Just because this now, is. Now that's something different, and that, yeah. that we just got. Because it's a lot to read. Yeah, so and I don't expect that you'll read it tonight. I just wanted to, it was a, it was something that. But we're talking about resolutions tonight. So. Yeah. Right. I know we're talking about resolutions. Um, I don't have a lot to say. I had here, if you had any discussions, I wanted to have a picture of what was going on. The first page shows you the existing conditions and what's being taken off and the second page shows you what's being put in to replace it. And that's just the same thing as is up here, and I don't need to go into that. Um, I've gone over the resolution. I have a little bit of a concern with the, um, the condition that we have an on-site rattlesnake specialist during 100% of the construction during the period when, when the snakes are out. I don't have enough of a concern to want to jeopardize that and willing to take that, but that, that report that I just got today does speak a little differently, uh, has an alternate plan. Um, I've suggested to Ronnie might want to look at it, but I'm, I just wanted to make you aware that there is a concern about that, but we're, we want to move forward, get started by the 1st of November so the rattlesnakes don't become an issue. Um, so, we're, if, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Otherwise, I'd be pleased if you would adopt the resolution as uh, drafted by Mr. Gaynor. Okay. So, as we discussed at our July meeting, um, all that was missing from this was a document that related to um, the steep slope that was not really a steep slope. That, that was corrected on the plan that had been previously submitted. There was some steep slopes within the septic area, right. but they weren't large enough to qualify for a regulated sweep, right. steep slope. Right, and as I remember, at the end of the last meeting, Ron said that um, he hadn't received that document yet, and that was why he, um, we didn't approve it then. So he, had, he has yes. it now. And he's prepared the resolutions as we directed him to do in the, at the July meeting. Steve, do you have anything to so The only add? thing I would add, no, Ron, Ron, I believe, did get that. He sent an email with these saying they were ready to be adopted, so I would assume that he, he has it. Um, Glenn, if, if you um, want these adopted now but want to come back and ask for modification of a condition, you could certainly have them adopted tonight, talk with Ron during this month, and then at the October meeting, come in and ask to have the resolution modified, he could do a modified resolution the board could have, that's, if they're so inclined. That's why I mentioned it. With that, that's, that's the possibility. I didn't want to slow things up. I, I didn't want to slow things up. I also didn't want to let you spring it on you next month, so to speak, I for a change. <laughs> right. Anybody have any questions? I do have one way to point that Glenn is raising. This is a typical request we have or re requirement we have that for a certain animal we have a wrangler of said specialty to monitor the behaviors of that animal? No, you got to be working in an endangered species habitat. Well, this, this, this isn't just breeding grounds, is it? This is dens as well? Or? No. Uh, well, I read it once, didn't understand about two thirds of it. But What's so, an area uh, they traverse? Is that it? I, I think if you read the, when you get to it, if you read the conclusion, you'll, you'll see what he says. It's not a... This conclusion in here? Yeah. That, uh -huh. uh, that's, I don't expect you to look at that tonight. Um, I think there's enough of a question to think that having somebody um, start off with an inspection, start off with, with a training session to the, to the people that are there, employ the protective measures that are described by uh, Mr. Marino and from Tim Miller's association, and then have a person on call would, would be preferable, simply, frankly, simply because of the, the expense involved in it. So anyway, we'll talk with my client about that, and maybe, we, maybe we'll be back, maybe not. Okay. Um, any other question? Neil? Peter? David? Um, so... 
with that, um, are we prepared to adopt the seeker, seeker resolution. resolution? So I want to make a motion to that effect. I'll make that motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then the second resolution is the resolution. Can't hear you. Sorry. approval resolution. The approval resolution. So, would someone like to make a motion on that? I'll make that motion. Peter, second. I'll second. Neil Toman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I vote aye. Okay, thank, thank you, Glenn. Okay, so the next um, thing on the agenda is the Taylor Fratizi parcel on 220 South Highland Road. We had a site visit a couple of weeks ago. Um, Steve, do you have Ron's notes? Do you want to talk about that? Uh, Taylor, you had a site walk on, um, so I'm not sure exactly when it, when it was. The ninth. The ninth. And Ron has a number of comments, which you've received his technical comment memo. And uh, the next question, I suppose, and maybe you want to address that to help the board decide, um, is whether you schedule a public hearing or whether you want to wait and have Ron and, uh, and Glenn talk about it some more before you do that. I find it difficult to bring myself to say this, but I don't think it's ready for a public hearing. Um, the Several things came out at that site visit, and we have been engaged, we're, had just been engaged. We are going to prepare the engineering site plan, supplement the, the application, and hopefully we'll have it in for October for Ron to get comment and public hearing in November, if, if that would be our preference. Okay. Um, so in that case, do, what's our next move here? We just say thank you, and think, yeah, we'll see you in the October? Next submission. Okay. Thank you, and we'll see you in October. Um, so now we're just going to move on to the last item on the agenda, which is SEJE Realty, LLC, 1510 Route 9. Uh, and that's Glenn as well. This is a uh, this is the former CK trucking site you approved for Lee's Ironworks a couple of um, a couple of months ago uh, a couple of items that I need to point out what. In, in fulfilling the conditions of the resolution, which most, mostly have to do with addressing Ron's technical memo, I went down there and we, we looked at what had been done on the site and what had, what had and how it, um, how, how it had been progressed. Uh, I can tell you, if you go down there, you'll see it's very much cleaner than it was. It's been, it's been neatened up and straightened up and cleaned up. Um, the, the container that the north end was take has been taken out per your resolution. I was down there today. There's a container there now. There's it's, a, it might be a different building, but there's something there at that corner. Back up here. Uh huh. It's it, it looks like it I looks like there. a construction office. It has windows. Is there? You have, no one request to move these items before. We did. You yes, you did. So was this, was this an extra thing in addition to the containers that was there? This was always there. No, I know. But we understood that things were being removed from that end entirely. I believe, and you put that note on the plan. So. I put that note on the plan. I believe it wasn't. If it wasn't, I apologize. But I, I believe it, I'm sure it was out of there. The two trailers here I know have been removed. The trailer, the double wide thing that was, that's been removed. There's a vegetable garden there now. Mm -hmm. um, regardless, uh, 
that condition will be fulfilled one way or the other. The outside storage had been approved from behind the building along that um, precast concrete block wall, um, but it was extended by Mr. Abdu along the entire wall with quite a substantial construction, which you see a picture of in the bottom. Um, I talked to Mr. Gaynor about it. Mr. Gaynor said that it is, not, it, is, it is much too much of a deviation from the plan for him to make any judgment, and I didn't disagree with him. So um, we proposed, uh, he said, what about screening from the road? So we proposed a, a fence along the parking opposite route, opposite, uh, opposite across the, the yard so that screening from Route 9, which is very effective right now, just naturally, but in the, in the winter there might be some visibility. So, so we're seeking a modification to the approval to allow this extended outside storage with the condition that the fence be installed. Uh, and we also ask for a little bit of extra um, outside storage. This is rebar. It's piled there now. This area is going to be settled for rebar. It's, it's ag again, it's against a wall. You'll see right over the wall from, from Highland Turnpike, it's limited to three feet high and six feet wide, which will bring it about a foot short of the top of the wall. The wall on the other side of the lot is the same sort of structure. It's quite a bit higher than Route 9, so Anybody coming by from Route 9, it'll, it'll be invisible. So we're seeking that modification to the resolution for this, um, for this additional storage, the extended storage that went beyond the limits of the original proposal. We've also addressed the dumpster issue, which was a condition under Mr. Gaynor's, um, Mr. Gaynor's technical comments, and um, that's, that's why we're here. So I think we had a, a letter from the conservation board um, with asking about where the fence was going to go. Did you see that? No, I didn't. Steve, did you see that? No? I might have got an email, but I just I didn't bring copy with me. Yeah, um, I don't have a copy with me either. Um, but it was, there was just a concern because there, the creek is there, you know, whether the fence was in the wetland buffer. Yeah, it's 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 planned to go right along the edge of the parking. That's that's there. That's where we have it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I don't know how we feel about that. Um, does anybody have any questions? Neil. I'm, I'm a little confused, Glenn. This uh, yellow curved structure you're pointing to this, there. This one? Yes. That's a pic this is a picture of it right down here. So was that, was that something we approved in the original site plan? No. So this was built without site plan approval? This, this was... And now we are retroactively being asked to approve a building, something that was built. No, I'm not. Asking, my, my, I'm not. Asking. That's what I'm trying to understand. Is that what? Yeah, you're I'm trying to. I'm trying to yeah. keep this stuff that was built. He, he, he built it bigger than it was supposed to be built. It was supposed so, to end about where the. So why did you say that was? That sounds like it was built. He's, he's in for amended approval. He's not asking you to back it into the old plan. He's coming in and saying, "Site now, it's true that they built in violation, and they could." Yeah. Be that's what I'm trying to understand. So what I said is correct. Then. So my question was: Was something built beyond the site plan? Yes. And so now we are trying to figure out how to now effectively make it okay. Well, if you say no, they got to remove it. Well, obviously, but I'm just trying to understand where we are in this. Right. Okay, so but can we just get a little rationale as to why it was then, why that was happened? Because I'm happy to engage in the conversation, but in some ways, we've dealt with this in a couple of the properties which you've been involved in, Glenn, and it's a little frustrating for this board where an applicant goes beyond, goes over the, further over their skis than we've approved, and they come back and say, effectively, aw oh, shucks, we didn't know, could you approve this? And of course, we're decent fellows. We realize that someone spent a lot of money building a very big fence that obviously is taller than this gentleman here in the picture. We don't want to make someone have to do anything un unfair or unnecessary with their property, but I, I'm just trying to understand why we're now, why this well, is- Well, I can tell you, when I met Mr. Abdu on the site, he said to me, I said to me, you've, you've made this too long, too far, um, I'll see what Ron Gaynor has to say about it. He understood that, he said to me that I, I he understood that the approval was to the end of the wall. An honest mistake he, of effort. The gentleman standing right there, maybe he has some opinion about that. Why don't you just, yeah. So, 
so that was, that was our conversation. And my discussion with Ron was that it's beyond what he feels he has any discretion over. And that's why we came back, to get it fixed. So um, would you like to tell um, us about it? Okay, you can step up to the mic so that it can I make be an recorded. honest mistake. An innocent mistake, what I understood, the fence was all the way to here. So I went galvanized all the rack. I did best and I could to make it look good. But all I know is all the way to here. And when he came back and approached me to it, honestly, I have a mistake. And I'm sorry. Okay. An honest mistake. And, and it's, Thank you. You it's, understand it's not the wall. Yeah. The wall was already there. So it, it's this. This wall that yes. you're seeing, that was already there, all the way out to there. That was not just built. Yes. What was built was this oh. concrete pad ah. and these shelving ah. structures. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, that much, that's very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. And just personally, I appreciate you coming in and doing this. No, it's great no, no, because, no, I, frankly, that's much better than the alternative, which is you just do it in hope. Thank so thank you for that. Yeah. And thanks okay. for that clarification. So... The next step for this. Well, I, mean, I just, I, maybe, maybe we're just speaking across terms here, <laughs> but it, it's not um, just a correction to their existing site plan. This is an amended site plan application. Now, we're not going through the informality of making them submit another application. They're, they're submitting a, a revised plans, but the next step to do is to declare it a minor project to declare yourselves lead agency in CEQA review, to type it in enlisted action, and you gotta have a 239M referral to the county on this. Now, since it's a minor project, assuming that you agree, and it was last time, I don't see why it wouldn't be this time, right. so. Um, no public hearing is required. You do have discretion to hold public hearing if you are so inclined. And then after that, we'll hear from the county and go forward appropriately. All right, so does anyone have anything else to say? No? So we'll entertain a motion to declare it a minor project. So moved. Neil Tomlin, second? Second. David Hardy. Um, and a motion, and all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, the next thing would be to declare ourselves lead agency. I'll, a motion. So moved. Neil Tomlin, second? I'll second. Peter Lewis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so the next thing is to type it a, an unlisted action. To, motion to that effect. So moved. Neil Toman. Uh, second. All second. Peter Lewis. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then I need a motion to make a t 239M referral to the county. I'll make that motion. David Hardy, I let you take the first one. Neil, you want to take the second one? Second. Second, Neil Tomlin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't think CB review of this is required, but since they were interested in the wall, you might want to send them over the application and ask if they have any comments. Okay, so we need a motion for that, a motion to send I, that's, it to yeah, the conservation So make a motion to send a copy to the conservation board. Anybody want to make that motion? I'll make that motion. Peter, second. Um, second. David, all in favor? Aye. 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 You could tell it was coming, right? <laughs> no, I'm okay. Um, are you interested in holding a site visit, or you just went out and you're not interested in going again? Well, I just went out there today because I saw this map and I had driven by like a couple of days ago and noticed the trailer's still there, so that was why. I, um, so I don't need to go there, but if anybody else would like to, does anybody else need a site visit? I don't feel the need for a site visit. I do can have some a tiny concern given the, the uh, material to the north that Ron, uh, that Glenn, excuse me, is talking about that would be above or below the wall? I've heard two different things. Below the wall. Below the wall. Yeah. Um, I know that when we have had now a couple of um, opportunities for projects of this property, we have had material um, public interest, particularly in the earlier incarnation, not Mr. Abdul's, but the um, car wash concept. Right. And I know the, the residents of Highland Turnpike are 
generally interested and active. Um, if, the, if this is not to be seen above the height of an existing wall, then I don't see a need. But if there was a, if anything else, I would feel some obligation to allow the public or at least the residents to know of its consideration, given that this is an amendment to the site plan. I realize that sounds like an incre incremental bureaucratic step, but it does feel like it may be appropriate. This, this wall is here, That's, I and, and it's a high wall. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because over here, there's a similar wall, not as high, about four feet high, like two, two, pre two extinct, yeah, pre-existing wall along this, this edge. It sits up four feet above the parking area, and it holds up the road. And we're, we're talking about banking re-rod against it to three feet high. And I, don't, I don't personally feel a need for a public hearing then. That's my point. But we're, we're talking about site visit. Well, I know, but I jumped over that one. I feel like I, I certainly also don't need a site visit. We've already been there I multiple don't times. We haven't about a public hearing yet. Oh, we don't? Right? We don't have to decide about a public hearing you yet. Do you do not. Um, since you're not going to hold a site visit, you could consider it if you wished, or you can wait until next month and see Ron's comments and decide. It's up to you. I think I'd like to wait until next month and see Ron's comments, okay. and then Andy will be here and well, Dennis and for why don't you just hold. If, I mean, for a public hearing. I un you, it's not where, that was where Neil leapfrogged over. Well, I'm sorry, perfectly ahead. frank, I'd rather have you say you're going to have a public hearing and have it next month than to wait a month to decide whether you're going to have a public hearing. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I'd rather you decide not to have a public hearing. Sure. <laughs> So, does anybody have an opinion on voting on having a public hearing? You might want to make a motion to have a public hearing? It seems like that we should have a public hearing in case do. there's anybody out there. Yeah. So, do you want to make a motion to have a public hearing next month? Yeah, I'll make that motion. Anybody want to second that? No? Okay. All in favor? Aye. I'll vote aye. aye. So is that three? You guys vote Let no? Let me down a nay on that. Nay too. Okay. Oh, how does fail? What was the vote? No, I think Peter said. No, it failed. No, it failed. Hey, I failed. He's I. You're I. You're I. Then we're going to have a public hearing. Three I's and the two nays. It fails. We have a quorum, three to two. No. They, uh, we have a quorum. <laughs> He's right. He's right. He's right. He's right. He's right. He's right. Four out of seven. Oh, fine. The gentleman is, okay. the gentleman so, is correct. So no public hearing. Okay. Done. Cool. He's such a good employee, Jen. Wow, you, you got to keep this guy. Keep him as long as you can. All right. So that's the last thing we had to do, right? That's the last thing with this we have to do, yeah? Well, so, next month he'll come back and there'll be comments. No, 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 tonight. 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 So now we could entertain a motion to close to close Adjourn. the meeting. Adjourn. That's the word I'm looking for. So moved. Second. Second. Neil. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Thank you very much.